So Neil, uh, I love your work. Uh, yeah, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about taking on a project like this. You're known for making great and useful mobs budgets, but this is obviously a much bigger project. I was wondering if you could talk about maybe some of the pluses and minuses of working on something that is a grander scale, and then if you just want to talk about the, what Neil brought to this project that made it special in your own mind. So now I'm making a modest move with a great budget. <laughs> <laughs> um, he, uh, what I liked about it was Veronica's book. And obviously, for director, it's much wonderful to try to create a uh, a new world, you know, a world set in the future, and, and and create all that visually. But really, what what I liked was that what was at the heart of it was the human um, elements of, of this young woman's journey, which I felt like yes, it's based on a young adult story, but I felt like it was the universal story about you know where do I belong, who am I? family, and I love myself, you know, what am I really willing to go out and win for? And I liked all those ideas, and I thought that they were, in her book, and really tightly tied to the action about what happens. And then I felt like it expanded out to something much larger, which was, you know, how do you keep a society together? You know, at the beginning it seems like they figured it out, like this five fashion system, which is kind of a cool idea, and uh, they seem to be living in peace and harmony because of it, and then it all starts to to fall apart, and I liked how um, the character Tris, you know, how she grows all through that. So, I like the fear of it. It's really cool. Sure. Uh, Rob, I just want to ask uh, about the show for the movies with the uh, you talk a little bit about being the lead role in these startups at a big scale project, and also how's it like uh, working with Miles again? by far way more difficult than human interaction. Uh, so that was a big, big sort of learning lesson that we to do. It was really fun. I'd never done a movie like this scale before with themes this big in a world that's completely different, or so much of the world we're in today, and so on. A lot of it was challenging for me, I found, because I had to sort of erase my preconceived notions of what I was used to doing to do acting which is generally reacting to somebody else and sort of create a new world and adapt my style of artistry to the style that the series are going to. It was really exciting. Neil created such a form. Veronica originally created such an amazing world that Neil visually brought it to fruition in a way that I could never imagine it. And so it was really, it was so, so lucky to sort of pieces of the puzzle of like, this. Our last thing is your class. Um, I imagine the life of a young actor, all of these sort of big franchise properties may come your way. There are agents may send you out for all of them. Have you gone out for any of the other big uh, young adult literary franchises and what may diverge into the one you wanted? And you talk to any of your colleagues who also had my sort of big franchises. Um, I did audition for Hunger Games back today, and Jen Lawrence actually helped me with diversion. I still have to get to be here, but I asked her sort of about her experience with the games and how her life has changed, but sort of going from small independent movies to something as big as other movies. And she gave me really beautiful advice, just sort of saying how much she appreciated it and how much it's changed her life in positive, in positive ways. And she really you know, helped me on this journey. And I went to Star Wars town and she wouldn't since she got her son. <laughs> <laughs>
Dave and I are just feeling terrible about it. Just don't do it. <laughs> don't give me that responsibility again. So, as, you know, that's kind of where the world and the, all those virtues come from, just from a very personal place. And as for how to translate it visually, I didn't do that. Back here with black background. If you were put into a pure landscape, like, as you guys, what would be? Like right now? Yeah. <laughs>
film. How is it to be back here now with the film? Man, it's crazy. Two years ago, I did like a very brief little press conference, and I was too scared. I don't know. I was sitting at a table just like this, and it was just me. And I was like, okay, <laughs> this is so good. Um, this year, it's just so exciting to you know, have something to share with people and to have that something be so awesome. <laughs> Yeah, I'm really excited for everyone to see this footage, and I'm excited for them to get to talk to these other people. It's all been great. I'm from the far left. Hi, I'm J.J. Dutton with Cynthia.com. Questions from Veronica. Uh, one of the main things about the concept that jumps out to me is that in my high school, is in a lot of high schools, all the tables are sort of divided up at lunch tables. And, and, uh, the, the divergent idea kind of uh, struck me as similar to the high school being divided up like that. What table do you use in high school? Uh, oh, what a question. Um, <laughs> my high school wasn't one of those like, recently revival high schools. I was a nerd, I guess. Yeah. Lucky you. Yeah, I mean, it's good. It's, this is a great place to be a nerd. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Hi, this is Katie with Money Moms. I have a question for Shane and for what is something that you guys admire about the character you both like? Um, I, I have a pretty good character from the very first time I read anything on I liked that he was different to me because he had a very grounded, uh, quiet sense of masculinity, which I don't think you see much these days, and it's just it's kind of reminiscent of, of those, those in my mind as characters, you know, gold movie stars, and you know, you know, all humans. This, this, this strong sense of masculinity without having to show it, having been watchful and uh, intelligent, um, but also encompassing all those traits of someone with strength and, 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 and common sense of, uh, strong sense of being. Um, I really admire Tristan's sense of selflessness. Uh, I know that she sort of grew up with that, and it was ingrained, very ingrained in her at a very young age, but I think that. That is a trait that we can use a lot more of in the world today. And I think that coupled with the bravery that she's sort of forced to call upon makes her a really profound, complex human. And I really love that. I'm here. Hi, I'm Sarah back with the Red Podcast. My question is for Theo. Um, obviously, not uh, many people have probably heard about you uh, or doing this. You were the foreigner flirt from Downton. Um, you made it to oh, well, it. <laughs> <laughs> So what was it like coming into this when really you weren't on anyone, at least fan-wise, the radar for this character? Um, well, I <laughs> it was good, actually, for me, because I came in late doors. I, uh, they had been looking for a long time to, to kind of fulfill that, that spot they hadn't found anyone. And as soon as I kind of came in, I met Neil and I shared it was a very natural fit, and it happened very quickly. And that is gratifying because I, I kind of knew that they, they, you know, they had invested in me and then found something that they've been looking for a long time, which is, which is a good place to be in because you, know, you feel safe in there and you feel uh, you know, gratified and wanted. And you know, he, he's, he's a tough character to, to find, I think, because he, he is young, but he's, he's an old soul. And he has, there's a lot of complexity, so. Hi, I'm Asia, I'm Tim Dr. Dark. Um, this question is for Neil Berger. Like, how true as a fan of the books, how true to the books uh, is the movie to the book? I think it's going to be very true to the, to the book, actually. Obviously, a movie's a different beast than a, than a book, and it's, um, but. Are there going to be a few uh, but, surprises for fans? What's that? Are there going to be a few you know, surprises for fans? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think there's a little. I guess I'm very small chihuahua. I think that was a great, great challenge for making this movie was to try to fit as much of the book into it because there's so many characters in the book that are, you know, that have their function in the book and they're kind of beloved and so many great set pieces. and. Um, too many really to fit into a movie, but we really worked hard to to squeeze them all in and come up with an idea for a movie that was, you know, even more fast-paced than usual and more 
denser than usual with so many, you know, there's three villains and there's, you know, she's got a whole set of, you know, friends and there's her relationship with her parents and her relationship with Jimmy Matthews and, with, you know, it's really, there's a lot going on in, in the book and there's going to be a lot going on in the movie and that was the real, you know, so it's very faithful to them. Obviously, certain things are kind of smoothed out or, or combined to, to make them, you know, so there's a one, of the central dramatic journey in the movie where there might have been more kind of turns in the book, but it's pretty faithful. Thank you. Which is exciting. Um, a question for you, James. Uh, I'm a big fan, actually, of your statement. So, I know you have a band. Um, are you going to be doing any of that lately? I'm going to be back to soon. I will. Do you think I'm not? Yes, no, that is part of my, uh, yes, I do, I'm uh, that is something I've done since I was very young, and I did uh, music at college, and, uh, and that's part of my, my thing. So, yeah, it's, it's a good way to, to, uh, to kind of build yourself off one different work stream and then dive into something else. It's a lot of hope, right? Yeah, I've heard of hip hop, uh, Euro <laughs> House Beach. It's done, staking in Red Hot. Um, guys, we have time for some more questions. I think people are going to answer. You're ruining this. Sorry, how impeccable. I was just curious, when you were writing um, the book and you were like, taking part in this whole process, is there any particular scene in the movie that was so familiar to the book in the way that you imagined it? Like, is there something special that you just loved that they did in the movie? The scene that was felt most familiar was the Paris Grizzly, because it was the Ferris wheel of that is in Chicago that I wrote about that Ferris wheel. They were climbing that Ferris wheel in the, on the ladder that I like researched to make sure it was there. It's like, oh, this, yeah, this is exactly right. You know, a lot of it, it felt very, very familiar because, as Neil said, being very faithful. I was trying to think of like the little scenes that I did not get. Fanatic, um, questions for Shane and Theo now that you just finished filming the movie just the other day. And maybe hard to choose, but was there a best day on set and what was it? My favorite day was the Well, there's a lot of good days in the universe. But the Ferris wheel day was pretty special. It was, it was a nice year and we climbed this Ferris wheel for 12 hours? 13 hours? 12 hours? Yeah. Yeah. From in the in the middle of the night, it was also first or full moon, and it was the first super moon of the year, which I was such a geek of. It was about 38 degrees out as well. It was so beautiful. We got to watch the moon go across. It was just a magical moment in life. And how often did you get to climb the Ferris wheel? Never did. It was one of my favorite moments of life. Wow. <laughs> I'd say mine was um, the kind of uh, I might have seen the movies when uh, Thor has been put under his, his serum and he's not himself and Shay and Devin Shay interest. You know, she 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 comes to to the to, to, to basically you know, she comes to save the day and there's a fight scene between them and then she essentially wakes them up through, through love. So I was going but but it, it, it was a very powerful scene and, and you know we were both sweating and I had my hands around uh, Chris and Chase, and I'm confused. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, around that there's this moment where, where we just connect and it felt very real, and, and it's also a great, it's a great way of adding emotionality to a big action set piece, and I think it's going to be a really beautiful part of it.